So I just started going through rating my latest photos from Utah, and I had the realization that I was missing out on a perfect opportunity to record a video for you all, covering not only kind of my rating and culling process, but also my secret weapon in that process, which is SurveyView within Lightroom Classic. SurveyView is a tool that I really feel is greatly underutilized or underappreciated by Lightroom Classic users. I think a lot of people don't even know it exists. So although I am gonna talk about my rating process and kind of my thinking that goes into that, primarily what I wanna focus on in this video is how to use SurveyView to help with that process, really streamline and speed up that workflow to make the culling and rating process a little less tedious. Now, before I get into that, I do wanna give a shout out and a thank you once again to my Patreon members for helping support this channel and my work in general especially to Barbara, who's my latest bronze level member. Truly, without all of your support, I wouldn't be able to continue to do this on an ongoing basis. Now, without further ado, let's just jump into Lightroom and start taking a look at things. So here I am in Lightroom Classic. I'm currently in the library module and I'm in the grid view, which is indicated by this icon down here. You can always get back to this view by hitting the G key. Now, depending on your level of familiarity, you also have loop view, compare view, which I do use occasionally, but primarily what we're gonna be talking about here because what I use the most is survey view. Now really quickly, just so you understand the terminology here, loop view would be if I were to double click on one of these images, this is loop view, the enlarged view of a single image. Again, if I hit the G key, that's gonna take me back to the grid view. And then I have survey view, which has the shortcut key of N. Now, if I hit N currently with just one image selected, it's just gonna give me a blown up view of that single image. But obviously, because I only have a single image selected, it's not gonna let me do comparisons between different sets of images to help me make my selections. So let me go back to the grid view here. Now, before I delve into survey view, you'll notice that I've already got some ratings applied to some of these images, and I've already rejected some of these images. So essentially what I've already done is I've gone through and made a determination as to which of my images from this trip deserve or warrant a one-star rating, meaning they're gonna move on to the next round of rating or cooling, and then I'll make my determination of two-star images, and then finally I'll do a final pass to get to a three-star level, and those are the ones that I'll take into the develop module and start working on my editing over time to see which ones work at that level or not. So in this particular case, again, I've done my first pass of culling. So what I wanna do here is do filtering for all of my one star and above images because my one stars are the ones that I've determined from that first pass of culling that I wanna look at a second time to further whittle things down in terms of the selection of images I'm gonna work with. So I can do that two separate ways. I can go up to my attribute panel and I can use rating one star or above. And now that's gonna pull up everything that is literally rated one star or above. I also have a custom filter created that I just based off of that attribute of one plus stars. You can see I've also got images that are only two stars, two stars or above, three stars flagged and a label. That's just kind of a personal organizational tool. Three stars, three plus stars, so on and so forth. So anyways, I've got my filter set to one plus stars. So I know that these are the first pass candidates in terms of ones I wanna take a closer look at. So again, I've already done that first pass to get my one star rated images. Now, as I go into my second pass to get two star ratings, I'm looking less at individual photos on their own merit, which is what I do in that first pass. And I'm starting to look at groupings of photos. So either the same composition, potentially with different lighting, similar compositions of the same scene, multiple photos from the same general region or location that maybe some are stronger than others when I start comparing them against each other, so on and so forth. So again, that first round, I'm just looking at each individual image on its own specific merit without worrying about the collection as a whole. Now from here on, I'm gonna start doing those comparisons, which is where survey view really comes into play. So such an example here would be this first image is obviously a little bit of a close-up detail shot of some rocks and debris and water swept mud along the riverbank. I've got another one here that's kind of similar. I've got some shots of this pine cone. I've got another rock. So those would be all examples of images that are fairly similar in terms of the overall theme or substance of the compositions, but now I wanna look at them collectively and say, okay, which are my strongest out of these? Now, something else you may notice is that some of these are color-coded blue. That's how I indicate that these are part of a focus stack that I'm gonna to have to stack separately outside of Lightroom. And then I've got the images actually stacked from an organizational standpoint. So you can see there's eight images within this stack, eight within that, two within this one, three, so on and so forth. If you're not familiar with the stacking functionality within Lightroom Classic, I do have a separate video specifically about that. So now that I've got multiple images selected, I'm gonna hit the end key to go into survey view. So now we can see I've got all of those images represented as thumbnails. I can have more images selected. You just have to be aware that the more images you select, 
the smaller the thumbnails are going to be, so it might be a little bit more difficult to really make your selections. The other thing I'm going to do here is to get myself a little bit more screen real estate is I want to collapse all of the side and top and bottom panels. So the quickest way to do that is hold down your shift key and press tab. That's going to automatically collapse those down. If you're not familiar with this, if you go over to the little triangles on the borders, they'll temporarily pop back out so you can still access them. So now we can see that I've got my different images that I selected pulled up in the survey view and thumbnails. If I look at these individually, I can also see the ratings beneath them. It's a little bit small, but there's my ratings. So one star, and then you've got blank spaces that would be available for higher star ratings. I've got my flag status, so picked or rejected. And then if I had color labels on these, which you can see down here in these examples, it shows your color label in the lower right corner with a blue indicator. Now you notice as I hover on individual images here, this white X on a black background also appears. So with that X button, I can tell Lightroom that out of this grouping of images that I've currently got selected, this one or these multiples, I don't feel actually fit into this grouping. So I can just hit the X icon. It's not going to delete the image. It's not changing the flag to reject it or anything like that. It's simply removing it from my current selection. So I can just look at the images that I truly feel warrant a closer look. So in this particular case, I really want to focus on these first two, I think. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit the X on these other images for the time being. So I can compare these two. It's the same scene, just one taken at a wider composition versus a tighter composition. Looking at them when I was in the field, I actually thought I preferred the tighter composition and there's still things I do like about it. But from an overall flow and texture standpoint, now that I'm back here on the computer, I think I actually prefer this first composition, the wider composition better. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that is my primary selected image out of these two. Now, how can you tell that? It's a little bit subtle. If I were to come over to the second image and click on it, you'll notice that there's a thin black border around it. That means it is my primary selection. So I'm gonna come over to the first one. I don't really have to select it in this case, but I'm gonna go ahead and rate it as a two. So I could come down here and just click on the empty spot here and rate it to a two if I undo that. By making sure this is the primary selection though, I can just hit the two key on my keyboard and now that one is rated with two stars while the unselected one or the non-primary selected one is still at one stars. The other thing you can do is when you've got your primary selection made, hit the space bar and it'll zoom it into a larger view. So if you do want to take a little bit closer look at it, you can do so by hitting the space bar. You can zoom in as you normally would, so on and so forth. To get out of that, just hit the N key again to go back to your survey view and you're back to your multiple selections. So now in this first composition, I've made the decision that I want this one on the left to move into my second round of culling. So I've rated it two stars. The other one is still at one star. So now I'm gonna hit the G key to go back to my grid view. I'm gonna move on to my next set of images. So let's look at these leaf images for the time being. I've made my selection, hit the N key. Again, you can see they're all pulled up. Now in this particular case, three of these are parts of focus stacks. Now this one I already looked at last night and I happen to know that on these two, the upper right and lower left, the leaf was moving with some wind in the focus stack setting. So really I'm just gonna eliminate these because I've already cheated and looked at them. So I've got the question now is, do I want to possibly consider this first image as the one to move on to the next round or the second one? Now looking at the second one, you would say, well, gee, let me select that as primary and look at it larger. That's not very well in focus, but again, this is part of a focus stack set. So I know from looking at it already that I've got enough frames there to get some more depth on this one. So for this, I'm gonna hit the N key to go back. I'm really looking at which is my preferred composition between the two. This is a single frame, so although zoomed out, it looks pretty good and pretty in focus. If I do zoom in, I can see that really the focus is just on this part of the leaf, the background leaf is out of focus, and even part of that front leaf is out of focus. So maybe that's not going to be my best bet. Hit the N key again to go back. So I think in this particular case, I'm gonna go with this one, which again, I've already cheated and I've rated it with three stars. But for the sake of example or sake of argument, this is how I would go about doing this. Hit the G key again. And now I've got four variations of the same scene. So I'm gonna make my selections there, hit the N key again. I'm gonna go in and really what I'm looking at here is differences in exposure and lighting. I've, I know through the first pass of culling that these are all sharp, I'm good there. These are all part of a focus stack set or individual focus stack sets. Uh, you can't see it in this particular view, but the corners are a little bit soft because of the depth of field challenges. So I don't need to worry about that again. I've already looked at that as part of the first pass. So right off the cuff here, I think I like the way the textures show up in this first one. The second and third ones, upper right and bottom left, 
I feel they're a little flat looking, especially this lower left one. So I'm going to go in and eliminate it. And now I'm really looking at these three and in terms of the tonality of them, the contrast, the lighting, which is all fairly subtle. It's fairly subtle differences between the three of them. But which one do I think I prefer? I think this lighter one loses a little bit of the texture and the flow of the, uh, the sand and mud along the riverbank. So I'm going to go and nix that. Now I'm looking at these two. Again, very, very similar in terms of lighting. There is a little bit of color coming in here a little bit more strongly than it is on this version. And I feel there's maybe a little bit more depth in some of these finer details. There is some light reflecting off of a canyon wall and I suspect that it was probably reflecting a little bit more strongly in the second one. So I've made this my primary selection. I'm gonna hit the two key and now it is rated with two stars while the other one is still just rated with one. Again, hit the G key to go back. So another example would be you know, looking at sets of trees I used as an earlier example, I can come in here, pull down the control key, and make multiple selections. Now if I hit the end key, you see I'm getting smaller thumbnails, which isn't necessarily bad because I can even step back a little bit and really look at each individual frame just from a whole, from a balance and structure standpoint, what do I think works best? So I'll already say I don't think this square one in the first slot quite works as well. So I'm going to hit the X to remove that. These particular two are very, very similar. They're actually the same composition, just one I shot 16 by nine crop and camera. This is the full frame crop. I think I like the 16 by nine better. I also think the exposure is better on that one. So I'm gonna nix the darker frame. Looking at this collectively and trying to make a determination of out of these, which are the best, I don't know that this second frame in the middle top row holds up quite as well. That said, I do, still kind of like it on its own. So again, this isn't my final pass. I'm going to do another round of this where I go to a three rating on everything, but I'm going to go in and start making my selections. So I've made the first two part of my primary selections by clicking on them and I've rated them two stars. Now that I've rated them, I can go in and remove them. They're going to keep their two star rating, but now I can look at these other frames that are more similar on their own and make a determination. The other thing you can do is if I hit the L key and again, Shameless plug, I've got a video on this as well, but I can enable lights out mode, which will either dim the surrounding user interface or block it out completely. Just helps eliminate distractions. You can actually go into your preferences and change the color mode. You could switch it to a darker gray. You could switch it to black. You could even do white, which I'll often switch to white when I'm making determinations around printing. But again, within your preferences, you can change that. And it just, again, helps you eliminate some of those distractions so you're just focused solely on the compositions you've got selected up here on the screen. So out of these, again, I've done some 16 by nine in-camera crops. This would be an example of a full crop. This would be an example of a full crop or full frame. And I've got some variations in lighting here, obviously. So out of these two, the top two, I'm not entirely sure which I prefer. So in this case, I'm just gonna go and rate them both twos. I can't make up my mind right now, that's fine. I'm not gonna waste a whole bunch of time because again, I want this process to be really quick or relatively quick. I'll make that final determination when I make my three star ratings. So I've made those selections in terms of my ratings. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those two. Now I'm down to these five. These are all very similar compositions. The top three are actually of the same cluster of trees, just slightly composed differently. And then the bottom two are the same cluster as well, both with different lighting and different crops as you can clearly see. So on the top three, I think I prefer the compositions that are weighted a little bit more with the main cluster of trees on the left. So I'm gonna eliminate this one. So now I'm down to these four. Out of the top two, there's really just very subtle light differences. This one I think is a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna just go ahead and pick it. And that's the piece too. Like some of these, it might end up just being almost a coin flip. If you go with one or the other, it's not really gonna matter. So just make a decision, apply your rating to move on. So now I've made my picks between those two. And now I'm down to these last two. Out of these two, I definitely prefer the light on the second one. So I'm just gonna go and rate it a two, hit the G key and I'm back in my grid view. Now I've still got a few more images here, but you can see just that quickly, I've gone through my selections from that first pass of choline and I've made my second pass. Now, if I were to come up here, I could filter again to two stars and above. And now it's gonna take me down to my two star ratings. But here I would just go through the same process. Now in this case, I might be looking at, okay, which are my strongest out of small scenes? So I'm gonna select these three, hit the end key, and I could say, you know what, out of these three, I like this one, so I'm gonna go ahead and rate it a three by clicking on it and making it primary and then hitting the three key. I know I like this one, so I'm gonna make it a three. 
and I've already made the determination this one is rated three and it's going to be part of my candidates for editing. So in this case, I've already made the determination on that one. But again, now I know even though these are three quote unquote similar compositions and that they're small scenes, I feel they each stand strong enough on their own that they merit being included in that final selection. Hit the G key again and go back. Now here's where I could say, okay, out of these tree photos, which ones do I feel are my strongest? I'm going to exclude this one that's got the yellow label on it because I've already edited it. Clearly I've made my decision, but I'm just going to come in here, make that selection, hit the N key. And here's where I'm really going to say, okay, looking at these six frames as a group, I don't think this second one stands up as strongly. It might stand on its own, but compared to these others that I've made on this trip, I don't think it stands up. So I'm going to remove it. Now I need to make a determination. Again, these two are very, very similar. This one's just cropped down, but I shoot in Canon, so I know I can recover the cropped pixels. So I'm just going to go and eliminate that because I like the light on this one better. And then these two caddy corner, again, upper right and lower left, they're actually the same scene, just composed a little bit differently, but they do have quite different lighting conditions. So now I've got to make a decision of which one I prefer, or I don't. Again, if I rate something a three, it doesn't mean I'm locked into it. I absolutely have to edit it and release it to the public and make it part of my official portfolio. It could just be that maybe I want to play around with one or the other and see which one works better. So I'm just going to rate both of these a three. I do like the cool tones in this one, so I'm going to rate it a three. And you know what? In this particular case, I like this, so I'm going to rate it a three as well. Again, none of this is locking you in on a lifelong commitment or anything, so just make your decision as you feel best and go from there. And then once I've got this process done and I've identified all of my three-star rated files, now I can take that filter and go into my develop module and start working on the actual edits for those images. Now what I also don't do is I never quote unquote demote an image unless I'm absolutely sure that it really isn't up to standard because I've found plenty of times and I'll go back to files from one, two, three, even four years ago, filter on my three stars and realize that, hey, I've got some stuff in here that I didn't edit back then, but now I'm looking at it with fresh eyes, a different vision, different understanding and knowledge of my post-processing approach to things, and now I've got stuff I can work with again. So I would encourage you, don't completely dismiss those files. They might come back and be valuable down the line. And with that, I hope you have a little better understanding of how maybe you could take this process or workflow that I've got and apply it to your own rating and culling process when you come back from a shoot, and also how survey mode or survey view can really help streamline and speed up that workflow in terms of getting you to the more exciting part, which is actually editing your images. And once again, I do want to give a shout out to my Patreon members. Thank you so much for helping support this channel and what I do. And until next time, take care.